Assalamu alaikum. Now we are in the part two, that is the final part, the writing part of the Great Ten Elite. And here the question number 16 to question number 20 are included. It must be in writing in detail. Before I start with this question, I just want to apologize that it's been a bit delayed when I'm finishing this writing part for the Great Ten Elite. I'm sorry because I was planning to finish it earlier, but there were a set of unfortunate circumstances where my laptop had some issues and that had to be fixed and took a lot of my time and it got delayed and my car, for example, yesterday broke down in the middle of the road and it's holidays now, so it was very hard to fix it. I just left it there and came back and that's why I've been doing it late nights and but anyways, I've tried to do how much I can and whatever is there, please do go through them and now I'll try to finish it before the exam by today in a few hours, but try to, you know, uh, revise how much you can and the presentation is already available you can click on the link in the description and get the presentation now the 16th question here is to determine the number and type of roots of quadratic equations here you need to know about the discriminant we know quadratic equation quadratic formula don't want the entire formula the discriminant over here which has been mentioned is just b squared minus 4ac what is this abc here, this is the quadratic equation. Whatever is before x squared is a, whatever is before x is b, and lastly, we have the entire term to be c, the constant part. Now, if we have these values, we can find the discriminant. Let's just substitute this, okay, over here. That is 1, minus 3, and minus 40. Let me substitute it. b is minus 3, the whole square, minus, what is 4? Four? 4 is constant, sorry, what is a? a is 1. And c is minus 40. Let me solve it up. It will be 9 minus 4 times 4 is 16. It will be plus, minus and minus will be plus 116. And the answer over here will be 169. Now, this is the part in the, you know, the formula, the quadratic formula inside the square root, okay? 169. Now, this one over here is a perfect square. In the sense, you'll get plus or minus 13. If it's a perfect square, wait one minute before we go in detail. Over here, they're just asking us to differentiate one between one another. So you do not need to know other details, but only if you find this, it's enough. Okay, I'll tell you why. This is the answer, 169. Now, same way you need to find the others other by the formula, and you must see what is happening. Same thing, A, B, C, and find out what are the answers? We will just look into the answers now and I'll tell you, but I will tell the other part about the discriminant in a while. For now, we will just look. This is 169. Fine. This is what 289. The another answer was 196 and the last answer over here we got minus 20, the last one. All the three over here are having positive values and one over here is having negative value. This means there is certain rules. Now I will tell you about the discriminant. When discriminant, that is b squared minus 4ac, is less than 0, you will have imaginary roots, two complex roots or imagined roots. You will have i, two imaginary, okay, imaginary roots. Here, b squared minus 4ac, when it's equal to 0, you will have Per, only one root, one real root, which will be a rational number. And when it's b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, you will have two real roots. These are the circumstances. You must remember this, two imagined roots. Now over here, since we have minus, less than zero is minus, we have imaginary or complex roots is the more appropriate term, complex, okay? Here, we will have complex root, whereas over here, we will have two real root, two real root, two real root. I hope this much is clear. Now then, what next? The next thing is, oh, okay, this is it. Over here, you can just tell this is it. Uh, it. But I, I, you need to know one more thing about this because for the next problems, this is very important. When it is greater than zero, there are two real roots, but there are certain circumstances. In the sense when it is a perfect number, Discriminant is always under a square root. So if it's a perfect number like 4, 
or 16 square root 16 is plus or minus 4 or say we got 169 this is root 169 is 13 these are all perfect numbers right perfect squares so when such numbers come you will have root like in the graph right you will have roots which are rational answers of these the solutions will be rational in the sense over here it can be minus 1 or 3.5 or something like that which can be written in fraction whereas if it is not a, a rational number say 8 if you put square root 8 you will get some other you know it's not a perfect square you won't get a number you will get something else like a decimal so such things will have irrational numbers like 1.75 3 2 like it just keeps on going you know it doesn't stop such numbers so you need to understand this uh, you know this definitions or this uh, divisions so now with that knowledge we will solve the other problems the first one is very simple just find all the discriminant here we got negative so this is error i mean this is the odd person out so you will have two complex root that's that's the thing okay other three equations have two rational roots why because all we're having perfect squares that's the reason now then the next one over here is about finding the error let's look at this problem here you can see Tama is doing certain calculation and Jonathan is doing certain calculation oh no sorry they're doing the same calculations okay they're solving this they're finding the discriminant no they're finding uh, they're doing the discriminant and trying to find what exactly is the solution now over here you can see Tama has got negative 57 so negative means no real solution yes that's and over here Jonathan see both are doing the same problem they are getting different answers I'm not sure which is correct we will do it in a while now since the discriminant is positive here there are two real numbers yes this is also correct but two real numbers correct but who has done an error let us solve it the a value is 3 b value is minus 5 and c value over here is equal to it will come inside so what you have to do is 3x square minus 5x minus 7 is equal to 0 b square minus 4ac is the discriminant you will have minus 5 the whole square minus 4 a is 3 and 7 is minus 7 uh, that's it here it will be 25 minus 4 times 3 will be uh, wait let's do like this 7 times 3 is 21 21 over here it will be 80 84 but this will be plus because minus and minus now add them up it will be 100, 100 and 509. Now, this, this person, Jonathan, is the person who got it right. Okay? So, that's the answer. And it's only two real roots. Now, why this person, Tama, got wrong? Here, you should take minus 7, where as this girl did not take minus 7, she took plus, and that's the error. I hope this is clear. This is the answer. And so, who is correct? Jonathan is correct. Now, what about these problems? Here, you have to reason them. Determine whether each statement is sometimes, always, or never true. Explain your reasoning. In a quadratic equation written in standard form, if A and C have different signs, then the solution will be real. Yes, absolutely, right? Now, what is this exactly? Let's write the discriminant formula. B squared minus 4AC. If A and C are having different sign, let it be any numbers. Okay, let's take 2 and 3. That's fine. But I have minus 2 or plus 3 or if it's plus 2, it will be minus 3. The signs are different. So here when you solve, what happens? Minus 4 into 2 minus 3. It will be plus. Answer will be plus. Or if this is minus, then this will be plus. Then again it will be plus. Only if both are minus or both are plus, then it will be negative. So they have told if the opposite signs, different signs, then the solution will be real. Yes, absolutely, it will be real. Okay, it's always true. Now, if the discriminant of a quadratic equation is greater than one, two roots are real and irrational. Now, this is, okay, not correct. If the b square minus 4ac is greater than one or greater than zero, yes, it will be two real roots. Real roots is correct. But whether it will be always irrational, we can't say because if it's a perfect square, the discriminant over here, uh, whatever is this value, is a perfect square. Like 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. If these are the numbers, 
then it will be rational numbers. Whereas only if they are not these numbers, if it is 8, 11, 12, 4, 15 or like this, then they are irrational. So it's sometimes true, sometimes not true. Okay, sometimes is correct. Sometimes, that's the thing. And over here, sketch the corresponding graph and state the number and type of roots for each of the following. Now over here, when these squares, oh, look at this. They have given the discriminant is equal to zero. Now let me just draw it. Whenever there is zero, there is only one real root. This is a rule in discriminants. So if it's one real root, when you solve the quadratic equation and calculate, you can check that it will be only x is equal to like one or to only one answer. That means it will be x minus one, the whole squared, such problems. Here, what happens is, the graph will only touch the axis at one point, one solution and then goes. Don't think y-axis is a solution. This is not a solution. Only at x-axis, x-intercept is the solution, zeros. Now, when it touches only one point, it's only one solution. This is the graph. Okay. So the graph, however, we are now four, but only one point. That's the answer. It touches only once. That's the concept. Now, what about a quadratic function in which f of x never equals 0? Okay, ne a quadratic function in which f of x, the y value is never equal to 0. What exactly does that mean? Let's uh, understand. Doesn't matter what you put now for a f of x equals say x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay? Like this. This is a random one. Um, yeah, this... This can be said, whatever doesn't matter. See, now mine, I'm not sure whether this is a proper example, but just to make you understand, whatever x value you put over here, whatever x value, this value will never be equal to zero. It cannot be. It can be any positive number, any negative number, but it will never be zero. In the sense, the graph can never touch this zero. If this is never equal to zero, it never touches this graph like this. This cannot happen. This is wrong, right? So the graph can be either like this or like this, something like that, okay? It can be like this. It should be only going downwards or going upwards. In such cases, you will have imaginary roots. It's not real roots, it's complex roots. So the graph will be something like that. See, it will never ever touch. So what is the discriminant value? It will always be less than zero because f of x is never equal to zero. So it should not touch this line. Y cannot be this, y cannot be at zero. That's it. Now, quadratic function in which f of a is equal to 0 and f of b is equal to 0 and a is not equal to b. Now, we it depends what you are substituted, but these two values are different, but both answers are, uh, when you substitute these both, they are equal to 0. In such case, what happens is, you are getting a solution over here. Now, what it means is, let me just draw the graph. Uh, let it be, this is the graph. f of a, like a, I'll take it to be minus 3. At minus 3, you are having the solution. Let me take B as 4. At B, you are having a solution. Are these two equal? No, they are not equal. You are having two separate solutions, isn't it? This is what it means. You are having one solution, two solution. That means you are having two real solutions. That's, that's it. Because whenever you have f of x, f of a equals 0, that's a solution point. Let's look in the previous problem. They are told this is not equal to 0. So you are never having a solution. But here there are two zeros and two separate values. The graph is something like this. It can be anything. It will be two real roots. It can be irrational or rational. We don't know because they have not given the discriminant. But we know it's two real zeros. That's it. Now discriminant is less than zero is imaginary. We have seen this already. It will not touch imaginary in the sense it's complex. Sorry, I tell imaginary. It's one and the same because when you solve these, you'll get two imaginary roots with imaginary numbers. Okay. Complex because a complex number is a number with real and imaginary part. When I tell imaginary, I'm meaning to say it's complex only, okay? It's a complex root because it doesn't touch the x-axis. And it's always, discriminant is always less than zero. Now, A and B are both solutions and can be represented as fractions. Now, this is important. Whenever you can write, both have solutions, okay? They both have solution. But it can be represented as fractions. So this may be 2 minus 2. This might be 3.5, 3 and a half fraction or half root half. 
these are all rational right whichever number that can be written as fraction is a rational number so you can have two rational roots two rational roots is the answer fraction means it's rational numbers what are fractions half one fourth quarter anything which can be written as a rational number now here there are instances now in such cases you know what the discriminant will always be a perfect square but when it is not a perfect square it will be irrational like pi value 3.1415 keeps on going that's irrational number so difference between that two rational roots and over here we have another problem see what they have told is this has one solution this is important they have given this equation this is equal to zero we need to solve they have told it's one solution so what is the thing here what is the a value a is equal to one b is equal to one the constant is m plus one now we will do uh, you know the square root function uh, sorry not the square root what i'm trying to say is discriminant i just forgot the word for some time now discriminate is b squared minus 4ac substitute the values it's 1 squared minus 4 multiplied by a is 1 and c is m plus 1 here this is an important thing we know that one solution means it must be equal to 0 only then you will have one solution that means the graph only touches at one point like this now let's solve i'm not sure whether it's correct this might be one i'm not sure whether this is the correct answer but anyways it's something like this only one now we'll equate this to 0 and solve. It is 1 minus 4m. Let's multiply this. Oh wait, 4m plus 1 equals 0. I'll take this 1 to the other side. It'll be, no, let's simplify first. Multiply 4 inside. It'll be 4m minus 4 equals 0. It'll be minus 4m minus 3. Okay, because minus 4 plus 1 is 3 equals 0. I'll take this 4m to the other side. It will be minus 3 equals positive 4m. Take 4 to the other side. Negative 3 fourth equals m. So this is wrong graph. It will be something like this at negative 3 fourth over here. And it goes up. Okay, this is minus 3 4 or at 0 0.75. This is the answer. So m value, you don't need to graph. You just have to find the m value. That is negative 0 0.75 or negative 3 fourth. It's the same thing. That's how we solve it. And here describe three ways, three different ways to solve this. Now, okay, solve this in such that you have to find the zeros, okay? How do you solve it? You, you know one way is calculator method, right? That is factors method. Let's use our calculator and check. Here you have to just press mode 5 and 3 and then substitute 1, minus 2 and minus 15. The answer is 5 and minus 3. That's the answer. Okay, now when you factor it out, you have to write it like this. What is the answer? We got x is equal to minus 3. x is equal to plus 5. When you write as factor, you, you cannot use calculator method. So write this question as it is. It's written, original equation. Then we write factors. Whatever answer you get, write, take it inside. It will be plus 3 x minus 5. Now the answer is x is equal to minus 3, x is equal to plus 5. Because the fraction method, the factor method actually is you have to multiply these a and c. What is the answer? It's minus 15. And b must be written down, minus 2. You must find two numbers such that when you multiply them, this is the answer. When you add them, this is the answer. So think over here. 5 multiplied by minus 3 is negative 15. 5 plus minus 3 is minus 2 oh sorry it is minus and plus over here this these are the factors whatever you get over here these numbers will be the factors you can see it is x plus 3 x minus 5 this is the factoring method but in calculator it will directly give you the answer now which do you prefer now this is the one which you should prefer because this is the easiest of all now there is one more method that is completing the square it's fine you can do it but it's just a you know difficult method i can say but we have done completing the square in the previous uh, uh, questions. Please go back if you want. I'll just tell you quickly. Here we have. There must be no coefficient over here. Write this first term as x only. Next term minus. Instead of 2 put it as 1. And then write whole square. And you must subtract over here. With whatever this number is there. Subtract it. Square of that. 1 square. 
minus 15 equals 0. Now, this is also simple. x minus sign. If it was plus, it will be plus. Whatever is over here, you should take half of it. 2 becomes 1. If it was, say, x squared minus 8x plus 15, it would be x minus 4. 8 by 2 is 4. If it was plus, it would be like this, the whole square. And then what you should do, minus no matter what, if it is plus or minus here, doesn't matter. This only will be minus 4 square. Then write this last term 15. This is the thing. Okay, that's the completing the square. Now here, what you do is, we have got this much. So here let's do x minus 1 the whole square. Once minus 1 square is 1 itself. 1 minus 1 minus 15 is minus 16 equals 0. Take this to the other side. x minus 1 the whole square equals 16. x minus 1 square root on both the side. Okay. It is equal to square root of 16 is 4. Take minus 1 to the other side will be 4 plus 1. x is equal to 5. This, oh, sorry, I have missed one important thing. It is plus or minus 4 here. Okay, one answer is 5. Now take this. I have assumed plus 4. Now there is one more step. What if it was minus 4? x is equal to minus 4 plus 1. x will be equal to minus 3. These are the two answers. Sorry, I forgot this plus or minus because whenever you are square root, it can be plus or minus. So this is the method. That is by completing the square. If you do two methods, it's enough, I guess, if you're writing. These two are okay. Now, you know the factoring, the quadratic formula method. This is one more. Or you can just write the three methods and solve it by factoring method and tell this is the easiest of all. The quadratic formula is given over here. Minus b plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac. This is the discriminant divided by 2a. You need to substitute all the values, whatever are there, and solve it up here also. Remember, there are two cases. What are the two cases? 2 by 2 plus 8 over here in the numerator is plus 8 and 2 minus 8 by 2. It will be 10 by 2 or 6 by 2. It is minus 6 by 2. Sorry. 5 minus 3. These are the two answers. That's how we solve it. That's the end. See, these are reasoning questions. They are not straightforward. They are not direct. So please try to understand the concept behind the problem and then try to solve it. And please do practice more problems. And this is how you can be thorough on this topic.